Taiwan's microchip industry is sailing on the back of an AI boom, and there's massive hype around big names such as NVIDIA boss Jensen Huang, so much so that local media have coined a term for this effect. In this week's CNA correspondent Victoria Jen takes a look at how Jensen Huang and the island are connected. Jensen Huang, the CEO of U.S. chip company NVIDIA, set up a media frenzy when he was in Taiwan in June this year. He was here for Computex, one of Asia's premier IT shows. Everywhere the tech boss went, he was mobbed like a rock star. Local media had a name for the frenzy surrounded him. They call it Jensanity. As part of the two-week trip, the 61-year-old made a stop at the National Taiwan University, where he gave a keynote speech. Thousands of people, including the who's who of Taiwan's tech industry, gathered to hear him speak. During the near two-hour presentation, Huang painted a future that will be revolutionized by AI. For the very first time, the IT industry, which is $3 trillion, $3 trillion IT industry, is about to create something that can directly serve $100 trillion of industry. No longer just an instrument for information storage or data processing, but a factory for generating intelligence for every industry. Everything is going to be robotic. All of the factories will be robotic. The factories will orchestrate robots, and those robots will be building products that are robotic. Robots interacting with robots, building products that are robotic. Huang, who was born in the southern Taiwanese city of Tainan before immigrating to the U.S. at the age of nine, left no doubt that Taiwan holds a special place in his heart. One of the highlights of Huang's visit was his meetings with local tech bosses, such as Morris Chang, the legendary founder of chip giant TSMC, and Taiwan's richest man and tech magnate Barry Lane. Huang Lingxin from 1993年創辦NVIDIA到現在,他都是跟台灣公司打交道。比如說一開始的繪圖晶片,他就是賣給台灣的繪圖卡。主機板公司 the ecosystem around NVIDIA and the AI boom is expected to further expand, benefiting more companies in Taiwan. And for more on this, we have correspondent Victoria Jen joining us live from Taipei. Victoria, Jen, sanity indeed. Uh, from what we just heard there, the message seems to be that without Taiwan, there will be no NVIDIA, which also means there will be no AI. Yes, you're right. Taiwan and NVIDIA and AI by extension are inseparable. And Jensen Huang wants to continue to maintain that close connection in order to excel in the AI realm. His close relationship with TSMC in the past 30 years is especially vital to NVIDIA's survival. TSMC is the sole production partner for NVIDIA's most advanced training chips, including its latest Blackwell lines. This ensures that his company has priority access to the most advanced chips. 
They are critical to NVIDIA's GPU production and maintain its position as a leader in AI hardware. Taiwan's dominance in semiconductor production means that NVIDIA's chips are often the first to market. And the fact that TSMC could deliver the 7 nanometer chips quickly and efficiently for NVIDIA allow it to be among the first to release next generation GPUs that outperform competitors like AMD and Intel in many benchmarks. Plus the fact that Taiwan is becoming an important hub for AI would mean that NVIDIA can leverage Taiwan's AI ecosystem to keep its leading role in the AI race. So this is making Taiwan sound very irreplaceable, Victoria, but it seems unwise for businesses to put all their eggs in one basket because we know that countries like Malaysia and Vietnam, they also want a piece of the pie. That's a very good question. Taiwan's dominance in AI is not without risk. We know, for example, potential military conflict in the Taiwan Strait could be disastrous for NVIDIA and the AI boom. But before we get into the details, I would like our viewers to have a listen to what this longtime industry analyst has to say. So, Taiwan is in the from the most the most important So, this is a very special 所以台灣過去的40年是一步一步 step by step 一步一步往上突破的那現在所有新興國家要做這個事情幾乎不可能所以台灣這個ecosystem短期人之內我認為至少十年是黃金十年 so basically what he said is companies may have no choice because the technology ecosystem formed over the past 40 years cannot easily be replicated. Taiwan has developed an intricate and highly efficient tech supply chain with thousands of interconnected companies that provide everything from raw materials to final components. For example, key players like MediaTek, ASE, and Foxconn rely on this ecosystem to provide critical components at lightning speed. Replicating this kind of ecosystem requires not only a massive investment in infrastructure, but also years of coordination among firms, local governments, and global partners. Now that Taiwan is becoming an AI hub, it will continue to become more and more indispensable to the global supply chain. So if Taiwan is going to be the AI hub for the next 10 years, Victoria, uh, which companies are going to benefit the most from this so-called golden decade? Well, as the world's largest contract chip maker, TSMC, definitely deserves the most attention. It has already seen its share price hitting a record high. And the fact that it produces produces more than 90% of the world's most advanced chips, has also put it way ahead of its, all, all of its competitors. Now, TSMC is expected to be a key beneficiary of the AI boom as demand for advanced uh, semiconductor surges. Another company is MediaTek, the world's largest smartphone chip maker. It has introduced AI-focused chipsets that incorporate AI processing units for mobile devices. It's expected to benefit considerably from the strong demand for AI-powered smartphones. Last but not least is Foxconn, the world's largest contract electronic maker. Uh, news reports say that Apple is in talks with Foxconn to make AI servers, but Foxconn has already reached full capacity because of orders from NVIDIA. Other smaller companies also benefit from the AI boom. For instance, AVD is a company that develops liquid cooling systems that can keep up with the NVIDIA's far hotter Blackwell generations of AI chips and systems. So you can see how hotly sought after these Taiwanese tech companies are in the global market. Mm, and, and you mentioned there the risk of a military conflict in the Taiwan Strait, and that could just derail Taiwan's AI dream. But is that the only challenge facing the industry? 
Yeah, that's right. But before I get into the details, I would like us to hear from Colin Huang again. 一九五八年，那么到现在，我出生那一年，台湾只有一千零九万人，但是出生的四十一万六千人，我们是 baby boomer。去年台湾新生儿只有十三万六千人，但是我们台湾有两千三百多万人，少子化的问题是很严重。所以这个时候不是只有基础劳工的问题，工程师不足，那我们应该怎么办？ So aging is a huge concern. Taiwan is due to become a super-aged society next year, with 20% of its population over the age of 65. Now, the problem is further exacerbated by one of the world's lowest birth rates. Official data shows that Taiwan could lose 35% of its population by 2070, and that is going to deal a big blow to Taiwan's workforce. But some Taiwanese companies are already making necessary preparations. Quanta, the world's largest laptop producer, for instance, has reduced its staff to one-third from five years ago by replacing workforce with smart manufacturing technology. So that's very important in coping with labor shortage. Back to you. All right. Appreciate that chat, Victoria. Thank you so much. That's Victoria Jen in Taipei.